Hi, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Welcome back for more Micro Moog Mayhem. We have two Micro Moogs left to repair and service, so let's dive in. All right, let's move on to Micro Moog number two. So this one, the main complaint that the owner brought it in for was uh, key contacts being dirty. sure are so we can uh, clean up the the bus bar and the key contacts there uh, but when I was looking at it I noticed that it's it's way out of tune and and not scaling so right now I'm on the highest octave setting and not only is this not F and it can't reach F with the tune knob on the back but it's it's way lower than it should be and then also scaling very well. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can uh, tune it through the adjustments uh, that are accessible on the back and get it uh, calibrated properly or if there's some kind of problem with the circuit that we'll, we'll need to troubleshoot once we open this up. Uh, another problem that I noticed on this one uh, is the modulation. So I've got square wave modulation turned on, the mod wheel all the way down, if I set the routing to the oscillator, I'm getting modulation uh, on the oscillator when I shouldn't. This is exactly like the problem that we just fixed on the other one. And when we crack this open, it wouldn't surprise me if we see some cracked solder joints on that left-hand controller circuit board. So let me go ahead and, and uh, fiddle with the uh, trimmers on the back and see if I can get this tuned and scaling. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention on this one is when I first was assessing it yesterday, uh, it was behaving like it was now, and then after a while, the uh, the wave shape started distorting, the filter cutoff frequency started fluctuating, um, uh, some high-pitched squealing noise uh, came in the output, and eventually the oscillator uh, just disappeared entirely. Uh, I, I made a little video of, of that. So this doesn't sound very healthy. So if that problem comes back today, then we'll have to troubleshoot that and figure out the source of that so we can get this thing working reliably for its owner. So the very first step of calibration is to put it in the highest octave setting, put it on drone, and get this tone to be 700 hertz. And I can get it down to about 51 hertz and up to about 77 hertz. So we, we definitely have some kind of problem that we're gonna need to check out when we take the board out. I check out the bottom of this one. Uh, it's got little covers we can pop off of these holes and get access to the uh, the key contacts or most of the key contacts looks like there's some in the middle that, that won't be accessible there um, this looks factory but it's not on the other two that I have here now so I'll have to look at the solder joints more closely but if you flip around the other side you can see this connector is uh, is nearly yanked out and uh, the pins there are bent they have one male header with two uh, female housings that plug into them. This one on the bottom here is for the ribbon controller for the pitch bend and this one is for the modulation wheel and uh, so it's it's pretty conceivable that that these uh, aren't aren't making contact in there. So I think what we'll need to do is we'll need to uh, take this board out, um, replace the male header and uh, then reseat this reseat this connector. So you can see actually someone's done some work here. There's like different kinds of heat shrink, a red and a black, and the heat shrink's like going into the housing there. So someone's done some work here. So it's also possible that the contacts in that, that housing weren't cricked right or, or they're damaged or something like that. So we might need to do a little cleanup in this area to make sure everything can plug in and make a good connection. Here I've removed the left-hand controller with the modulation wheel and the uh, pitch bend ribbon and you can see that connector there uh, is all tweaked 
um, the one that I disconnected that goes to the rest of the keyboard, those pins are bent over. So uh, that connector's got to be replaced. And looking in the wire housing, I can see that at least uh, the one on the left and the, and the one in the third position, the Molex contacts have lost their tension as well, probably from whatever force involved bending that header over. Yeah, I'm not sure what was going on with this, this third one here, but the heat shrink was going all the way into the housing. And uh, the uh, wire was soldered, and I'm not sure if the heat shrink was the only thing holding on that Molex connector, but that's no good. So replacing this uh, messed up header and uh, changing contacts on those, those ones that were visually damaged has fixed the modulation stuck on issue. So here I'll turn modulation from off to uh, oscillator routing. And we don't hear any change until I raise the mod wheel. So one problem is fixed. So you'll notice now that the pitch is much higher than it was just a moment ago, and that's because I fixed the issue that was causing our oscillator problem. So let me turn that down. Before we were hearing something on the order of uh, 50 to 70 hertz, and now we're, we're close to the 700 hertz that we're looking for while the oscillator is droning. And that was due to this uh, transistor array chip. It's a 3046. It's got five transistors on a chip. And uh, it's used for the exponential converters for uh, both the uh, filter control voltage and the oscillator control voltage. And to keep those stable, uh, what they did is they used the fifth transistor on the chip as a heater, a self-regulating heater. And it heats the chip up to uh, 131 degrees, 55 Celsius. There's a trimmer here that you can use to adjust the heat on the chip. And that's well above what your, your room would be under pretty much any circumstance. So it doesn't matter if you move it from a warmer or colder environment it will keep the oscillators temperature stable and uh, one of the transistors on this chip was bad and I'll show you how uh, you can test this chip out of circuit with a multimeter so I've got here my multimeter set in the diode test setting so when it when you uh, normally place this uh, properly biased on a on a diode it will make a beep and show the forward voltage of the diode which is usually about 0.7 volts so uh, let me turn this to keep the, the chip and the paper aligned. So the, what we'll do is we'll put the red lead on the base of one of the transistors and the black lead on each the collector and the emitter of that transistor. So the first transistor in this, this one is uh, pin 2 for the base, pin 1 for the collector. And there I got a beep and a forward voltage of 0.776 volts. Uh, I could put it, the black lead on the emitter and uh, it, that also tests good. So now I'll move over to the second transistor. So that's pin four is the base, and there's the emitter and the collector, and that's fine. So let's move over to the third transistor, and I'll go uh, pin six is the base, pin seven is the emitter, and pin eight is the collector. And you hear here there's no, there's no beep. Uh, it's open, open circuit. So this transistor, Q3, has, in this transistor array, has failed. And looking at the schematics, this, this third transistor, pins 6, 7, and 8, is actually the, transistors, the transistor that's used for that self-regulating heater on the, on the chip. So uh, we could expect uh, both the filter and the oscillator to be pretty messed up if that heater isn't working properly. And that could easily explain the weirdness that I experienced after this thing had warmed up yesterday, uh, where the filter cutoff frequency was fluctuating and where the, the oscillator disappeared. That this chip is, is very important to the functionality of this, of this keyboard. So, um, yeah. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna clean the pots and switches. I'm gonna clean the key contacts and then put everything back together calibrate and test again.
So I should mention, because we replaced this exponential converter chip, the transistor array, we need to do some recalibration uh, to the uh, temperature trimmer, which is accessible only with the board removed. So while we have this out, we're going to adjust this temperature trimmer. Uh, we're also going to uh, adjust the, the power supplies uh, minus 15 volt trimmer. And for those of you using this video to, for help with your micro mode, the service manual talks about uh, calibrating, measuring things on P13, and you'll notice sooner or later that there is no P13. It's actually P3. So this this Molex connector here, you see it only has one one wire, which is a ground wire. Uh, the rest of these, and you can you can just probe them here um, on the the right angle header, uh, those are just test points. So you can use that to, to measure the uh, control voltage for, for various things, the temperature control, the um, filter control voltage, and the oscillator control voltage. But these voltages are not in volts per octave, they're in 19.55 millivolts per octave. So I was leaving this on to warm up before I calibrate it through the rear trimmers and uh, the problem I was having earlier with squealing noises and oscillator and filter pitch changing they haven't come back but there is a problem that that came back with the wave shape so you can hear pretty much pretty much I'm hearing the same narrow pulse regardless of where that wave shape pot is turned. So there is still an intermittent problem that needs to be tracked down. So what I'm seeing is that this problem is actually coming from the VCA. So all the way, this is, this is the input pin of the VCA, all the way there from the oscillator through the wave shaper and the filter, our signal is nice and steady. But if we take a look at the output of the VCA, we've got some issues here. So similar to our problem with our other micro mode where our ladder filter was filtering everything, we're going to take a look at the control voltage that's controlling the VCA before we make any assumptions about what's wrong. So you can see right now it's, it's actually toggling between working and non-working non properly states. Control voltage is steady there. There's our messed up output toggling with, with good output. So I think at this point it's safe to say that the 3080IC chip here is bad and needs to be replaced. So I had replaced that 3080IC chip and the problem didn't go away and I actually found that it was the, the next stage of that uh, VCA, it was the op amp stage of it, uh, that was affecting the uh, output of the 3080. So this is a uh, 1458 IC chip. For those of you following along with the schematics, it's IC602, 602B rather. And you can see here in the uh, op amp tester that uh, the second half, the B half of that uh, op amp is dead. Actually, when I first powered it on, it was lit, so it's just, it's not working right. So the new IC chip there now. Um, now the VCA is, is doing its thing properly. Okay, so I've got this one back together. So we've got two of the three finished up. All right, two down, one to go. This third one actually is, is working uh, pretty well. Uh, it's dirty. The case is very dusty and dirty, uh, the pots are dirty, the key contacts are dirty, the bushing is, could stand with uh, being replaced. I already changed the power cord on this one. Um, 
but uh, one of the keys here is cracked and it's been glued back together so I want to replace that key. Uh, so I'm going to do a little clean up to this one. So I'm cleaning up the left hand controller here. I cleaned the mod wheel and the mod wheel pot and uh, the pitch ribbon here. It it works but it looks a little ratty. You can see that this uh, smooth coating is coming off here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this this out, the ribbon assembly uh, unscrews here, and I'm going to put a, a new coating on top. So here I've cut a, a new piece of, of this. This is a PTFE Teflon coated fiberglass tape. It's three quarters of an inch wide. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover the old, cover the old tape. and press it down. And there we go. So it doesn't do anything to repair a, a, a damaged ribbon. It's just a purely cosmetic thing. And the, the current tape is, is a little browner than the original, which is more silver colored. But uh, in my opinion, it looks better than a ratty torn up ribbon controller. So the case and panel is looking a lot better with the circuit board out, with the left hand controller out, I can give it a real deep cleaning and get those uh, 45 years of of crud and dirt and grime off the panel. So this is all done and closed up now and it, it turned out really nicely. Uh, the, the panel and the case cleaned up and the knobs I ran through the ultrasonic cleaner and these were all grimy and dirty before and now they're just shiny and they look they look brand new. I ran the keys through the ultrasonic cleaner and I put new bushings on it. And uh, it's looking and sounding really nice. And here's the three of them together again, all finished and ready to go home. If you're trying to repair a Micromog, hopefully this video had something that will help you out. For the rest of you, hopefully this was an interesting look inside the Micromog. I'm Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.